two of us are concerned. We are not leading there. Maybe other people. Manoj, well. there are concerns right. about the Hindu marriage. Because it may not be necessary for the court then to get into get into more well, uh, next issues pertaining to personal law. Who is qualified? Yes, my lords. Hindu marriage the is Hindu qualified. Marriage, like, so perhaps you can all address us on 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 this on this aspect. That's why when we began, we we we. As, mm -hmm. Can I, can I take two no, just a minute. minutes? Just a minute. The possibility is the states must be heard. It's a constitutional issue. Uh, Dr. Gurson? My Lords, thank you. My Lord, the Chief Justice may recognize, my Lords, that the Hindu Marriage Act is not an issue necessarily of personal law. It is statutory law. And we will demonstrate that. The terms of the Constitution, the reform of the Hindu Marriage Act has always been in the context of statutory law. So, my lords, to that extent and that extent only in the context of statutory law and making statutory law workable, because my lords will know, my lords, that the origin of the Hindu Marriage Act, the Hindu Code, did something that was not permitted in sacramental Hindu law, which is intercaste marriage, inter sagotra marriage, divorce, in inheritance to. Dr. Swami, but there's also a, there's a, Dr. Kurswami, there may be a, uh, there may be some uh, amount of uh, sage wisdom in also going about our interpretative task in an in incremental manner, because otherwise, do we then confine ourselves only to the Hindu Marriage Act? Then what about the Parsi Marriage Act? What about the Muslim uh, law? What about the Jews? What about the Buddhists? We, a lot of other communities. Therefore, perhaps uh, one option for the court, because the constitution itself and the law is itself evolving. So, uh, and the court has to be mindful of the fact that we are doing by process of interpretation uh, what you are calling upon us to do. So, it may be some element of uh, judicial discretion and perhaps going incrementally, covering a, covering a canvas for the present. Which would substantially then, uh, assuming that even there you are right, because you have to hear the other <coughs> side, uh, confine yourself to this incremental canvas and then allow society to evolve, uh, allow Parliament's perceptions to evolve over a period of time, because Parliament is also responding to the evolution of society uh, over a on, period on of time. Is the canvas after Ms. Kuruswami is finished, I want just three or four minutes. Are you finished? Yeah, but it's only three or four because land print is given, my land print is given. Because we can't deny the fact. On canvas, well, we can't well. deny the fact that there is undoubtedly the legislative element also involved, which is either the states, the parliament, what the my respectful submission. Having regard to that, we need to balance out various facets. So this might be perhaps one, one way forward. It's the only thing I'll say to this. Yes. So we don't have to decide everything to decide something in this case. No, no, my lords, I, I follow. I follow. The only there thing are, uh, say to me. Yes, my lords. One is the mm -hmm. channel pointed out by Mr. Rodri in a restrictive sense that only construe the Special Marriage Act. Uh, if it founds favor with us, it will give us status of marriage. If it not, he rightly said you are out. Therefore, whether issues, other issues at all arise or don't arise will depend on how we interpret this aspect. Other Lord, issues may I survive for another day or may not survive for the time being for another day, depending on what we view we take on this core issue. And uh, in the wisdom, as the Chief Justice said, sometimes incremental uh, changes in issues of social and society ramifications are possibly a better cause. There is a time for everything. There is time for some things to come. Therefore, uh, what was being suggested was, uh, can we, for the time being, confine it only to this limited issue? Your... Don't step into, let me complete. Don't step into personal law issues under religion, different religious norms. Don't get into any of those issues. But only say that can the Special Marriage Act be interpreted in a manner by reading into it a general, uh, a gender neutral situation. Yes, uh, period. Can I say? And perhaps far you can then help the us. You can assist us. You can assist us, and we'll ask the solicitor also to assist us on how we can sort of uh, develop the notion of a civil union. Civil union. Yes. which really finds recognition in our in our statute 
namely the special, special marriage act. See, because uh, now, for instance, you know, you I'm sure you, they, they, you wouldn't also deny the fact that between the time that Navtej was delivered and today, our society has found much greater acceptance, say, of uh, same-sex relationships. For the last five years that we have seen it unfold, Definitely. there's been, and that's very positive because you know there you find that there is a greater acceptance acceptance in our universities. And by the way, our universities don't consist of only urban kids; they all come yes. from the yes, of course, smaller from the smaller areas. Yes. Yes. But there is this acceptance which is evolving. So, so you know, in this evolving consensus. The court is also playing a dialogical role to yes. create that consensus uh, and move towards a more equal future. By being conscious of our own limitations, yes. which yes, we can't deny in the legislative arena. I follow. I, 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 the only request I would make is that the question may be left open to be adjudicated. Obviously, like we're not going to reject uh, what we don't. Yes, we can always but confine we, our yes. canvas and then not reject. Yes, uh, obviously not. Yes. Yes. That is not second, necessary for the court to do at all. Simply this. That the second point is simply this: that marriage is not only as of that, but not. But leave now. broader and broader issues for a for an evolving future. Yes, but marriage is not only a question of dignity, as if that were not enough. It is also a bouquet of rights that LGBTQ people are being denied post Johar. Right? Those rights are simple things: bank account. Life insurance, good news, good news. medical insurance. I, for instance, <coughs> frankly, can, rental accommodation. Rental. I cannot buy SCBA medical insurance. Citizenship. I am a member of the SCBA bar. I cannot buy my family medical insurance from the SCBA. So this is the reality of how rights are exercised. Rights are exercised when you are able to protect your relationships. One facet of that right is a constitutional value of dignity, equality, fraternity. The other facet of that right is the day-to-day -day business of life. And the day-to-day -day business of life is all of these things. Now, when we look at law in India, and all common law is premised like this, that most rights flow from this notion of blood relationship, i.e. either being born into the family or being married. That is the problem, my lords. And so, therefore, short of full marriage, whether my lords find that under the Special Marriage Act or be that as it may, short of full marriage, it will mean, if it's short of that, it will mean that subsequently, not just Mr. Rodgi, Mr. Kripal, me, we will keep coming back to court to have to litigate individual issues of discrimination. I am not able to nominate my partner for life insurance. Now, these are not theoretical issues. This is our life. Right? So, so therefore, we say marriage, because that is the notion, not only for society, but that is the notion that the legal framework, which is premised on common law, understand and takes within its fold. Mm -hmm. So not therefore, my lords, respectfully, therefore, the problem is that anything short of that, if it is a civil union, so this correspondence will now start, my lord, with insurance company, with banks, with hospitals, with wills, with estate duties, with anything that is prerequisite to being able to live a life outside the home, including buying that home. And so there are things. folds here. Mr. Raghi, and, taking a cue from what she says, yeah. See, even in Puttaswamy, when we laid down the right of privacy, yeah. we were conscious that it had many nuances. We said we can't beforehand take all nuances into account and rule on this thing. As it evolves, things will evolve. That's the basis of the... But, you know, these are absolute day-to-day -day issues. So, you know, take the, take the Income Tax Act. The two partners you know, can't give a gift. Gift is not free of tax. So but died. provided without See, you are married. Well, if you succeed. I'm saying if, if you succeed yes. on the fundamental issue yes. that it can be of read into, things will work out. Many nuances will start. It may take time to work out. It may require more visits to the court. One can't say. But they are, it is very difficult to say that we work out all possible nuances now. Even the nuances which you think exist at the moment to be taken as a bundle of things and dealt with. So, uh, therefore, the suggestion which was following was, let us 
if we confine it to this fundamental issue under a particular act, that's it. We don't touch personal laws, we don't touch anything else, uh, we, we, we don't uh, get into anything else. But it's on the canvas, on, I want to say this first. Yeah. On the canvas, just one second, but, but on canvas, there are two words here. Of course, on the confinement bullets, it is with great respect, the better profitable way of doing it. There are very valuable arguments by the Hindu Marriage Act batch or even malas by other personal laws. Both of us malas in the two lead matters are not arguing that. We are only in SMA. So malas, a way to start would be to malas limit it there. I entirely bow down to what is falling from my lips. But malas, on the canvas, just three or four minutes, because there are two crucial words here, marriage and persons. Same sex is a slight misnomer. The correct word is person, not same sex. I'll just take three or four minutes first. Marriage largely, my learned friend, is covered. Whereas there is two categories of consequences. These are consequential issues she's raising. One is the minor or major secular consequences of marriage. Your lordship is not in this matter. In the event that your lordship holds marriage to be this way or that way, not creating an empty shell called the word M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. It has to have some consequential benefits. Marriage, well, in any case, now you can have a live-in. You need not even call it marriage. It is because of the consequential benefits. So your lordships may need, this is entirely a lordship discretion. I understand it's a great advance in law if your lordship even were to interpret same person marriage as a marriage. I'm not at all well, diluting or reducing that. But your lordships, according to me, even in this more limited canvas, must consider traveling a little ahead. One <coughs> category is what my learned friend has said. These are secular incidents of daily life. They involve nothing beyond that. And your lordships can have a reasonable listing. Now, there are larger issues which your lordship will explicitly keep open. I would say that even those can be covered by marriage, but possibly, Malus, we are too early to start doing that. There is succession law, certain aspects. There is adoption law, certain aspects. There is certain other things. We are not at all, Malus, giving it up or lessening it. But your lordships in this, the, the crucial word which fell from the chief justice is incremental. Malus, I always believe that, Malus, your lordships in such matters is like a rubber band, Malus. Your lordship expands incrementally slightly. You stretch the rubber band too much, your lordship is pushing, Malus, pressure that the rubber band will break. Because that slowly movements is balanced on the societal view of the rubber band. Now, adoption, according to me, is crucial. It's crucial. There may be some non-adoption issues, which your lordship may not consider crucial. I'm not, I'm not able to, in fact, itemize. But your lordship will guard against holding on the left hand, in the event your lordship so holds, that marriage of same persons is valid. And on the right hand, make it an empty shell. That is point one. Point two of the canvas is Malus, even more important. The point arises from Malus, not having to come to your lordships every day. I, that's why I said Malus, the word is actually more appropriate. I've looked into this some literature, Malus, same person. Now, Malus, your lordship has got one is heterosexual marriage. Lordship, we call it this side. One is man man or woman woman, which we call homosexual or lesbian on the other side. Now, Malus, there are two actually parameters of differentiation. One is sex-based, which Malus, must include <coughs> between the man and woman sex. There is Malus, also a whole range of combination of persons with special biological features. It's not only man, it's not only woman. The second category is gender. That is the masculine feminine. So a male body can be imbued and overshadowed by completely female psychological instincts and vice versa. So therefore, once your lordship holds today, assume as a matter of argument, that your lordship were to hold that same sex marriage is valid. Same sex in the sense of man, man, woman, woman. It is not intended that those persons who are in this, what is known as a whole bolus range of shades, shades, the complete spectrum, what your lordship is, we tend to say LGBTQ. I looked it up, Malus. It is L, lesbian, G, gay, B, bisexual, T, transgender, Q, queer, I, intersex. And then your lordship says A, asexual. And then your lordship says plus plus. The actual correct thing is, so well, this plus plus is a whole shade, a spectrum of different hues and colors. 
Now, clearly, if your lordship were to hold same person marriage, your lordship doesn't mean to limit it to same sex marriage. In the event, your lordship were to hold. So that your lord doesn't have a balance to borrow a new person coming here and saying this. So the correct formulation would be two, consulti two consenting adults. I'm only giving a summary. Two consenting adults along the bodily, gender and sex spectrum. Either you define by gender or by sex spectrum. This is the other facet. Now, all of this can be profitably started with Bullis SMA. Because your lordship is making a start. Were your lordship to leave the rest of it explicitly open? Or your lordship may have a deferment and have it considered separately? It's entire lordship discretion. They have also valuable points. I'm not only the Hindu marriage at category. Other people also. Hindu marriage at category is there also. Secondly, Bullis, let us be very clear. I was heard with some alarm, my learned friend's opening intervention. Nobody is arguing at the moment, nobody, I will not say at least the two of us, fellows, or the three of us, are not arguing personal laws at all. We are also not. We are also we are not. Number three, we are, fellows, what is the meaning of this repeated thing about state intervention? Your lordship for the first batch is interpreting this way or that way whether SMA, and our arguments, our, that is my arguments are in two parts. One is well, these fourfold well, parameters of discrimination, which is the most important, 15, 14. Second is freedom of expression. The very interesting facet of freedom of expression, as Lord said, is symbolic in a community sense, not only individual. Third is well, dignity, 21 and other things. Fourth is well, how to remedy it. And the second part of the submissions is the entire notice objections regime of the SMA. That part would have to be held unconstitutional. The first part is interpretive. If your lordship is with us on that, the second part would have to be interpretive, uh, unconstitutional. The now notice issue, the notice issue is even in a heterosexual marriage because you know you are saying that even yes. in a heterosexual marriage, yes. the Actually, fact the that you have to give a notice and have people object to whether there should be a marriage or not the, is unconstitutional. The, the funny part is, well, it's the funny part is, and this is just an aside, that the object, howsoever noble, of having this section five to ten regime is being proved by statistics on the ground to have the exact opposite effect. Exact opposite. Your Lordship invites opprobrium, oppression, physicality, violence, elimination, extermination. And I'm asking myself one question. Malas, your Lordship has conditions of marriage in all, even Parsis, Christians, Hindu Marriage Act, other acts. Conditions of marriage are there, but something or the other is there. If you give an affidavit saying I'm satisfying the conditions, and your lordship subsequently files the affidavit to be false, or any spouse finds you to even a third party find it can be struck down. It's void or voidable, it's struck down all the time. You don't need to have a notice period in advance after the conditions. This is peculiar to only the SMMLs. Your lordship is not well, allowing those conditions to be violated by the non following of objections. It's a well, absurd situation. Now, that being the situation. Yes. Otherwise, we never end.